Morning people. I was only going to do one chapter today but I left it with such a cliffhanger I just want to keep going so I'm going to do chapter 18 as well and then the last chapter tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you're having a good day. It's Monday week 9 and we're up to chapter 18. Well, hope you're having a good day. I am. Make yourself a nice warm cup of tea so you can take your mask off. Mm. I'm enjoying my tea even more now. Um, let's go. Okay, Rufus, 5.59 p.m. I want to get Amy, get at Amy, thinking she led him here, but she's standing between me and his gun. I know she's not going to die today, but that won't make her bulletproof. I don't know how Peck knew to find me here with his goons and a gun, but this is it for me. I can't be stupid. I can't be a hero. I don't want to make peace with this. Maybe if I had a gun pointed at me before I get Mateo and got my Pluto's back, yeah. Whatever, pull the trigger, but my life is stepping its game up. You're not talking shit now, huh? Peck says. Asks. His hand in is shaking don't do this please amy shakes her head this will end your life too you're begging for him right you don't give a shit about me i will never give a shit about you if you do this she better not be saying this just to calm him down because i will haunt the hell out of these two and if they actually stay together i want to take my shot at hiding behind malcolm for a second and dashing toward peck but it's not going to get me far mateo He's coming up behind Peck and I shake my head at him, which Peck sees. Peck turns and I run at him because Mateo's life is threatened. Mateo punches Peck in the face, which is straight unbelievable. And it doesn't send Peck to the floor or nothing like that, but we got a chance now. Peck's homie swings at Mateo and is about to knock rock his head off his shoulders, but he pulls back at the last second like he recognises him. I don't know, but Mateo finally steps back. Peck lunges for Mateo and I charge at him, but Malcolm beats me to it, running into Peck and his boy like a tr train carrying them through their air like, as the gun drops and he slams them against the wall. The gun doesn't go off. We all good. Peck's other boy goes for the gun and I kick him in the face as he goes to grab it and Tago jumps on top of him. I grab the gun. I can try and end Peck for good and keep Amy safe from him. I point the gun at him as Malcolm clears away. Mateo is looking at me the way he did when I caught up with him after he ran away from me like I'm dangerous. I unload the gun. All the bullets find their way into the wall. I grab Mateo and we jet because Peck and his people are here to kill and we're the ones most likely to find a knife in our necks or bullets in our heads. This day is doing me dirty on, on goodbyes. Dalma Young, 6.20pm. Deathcast did not call Dalma Young because she isn't dying today. But if they had, she would have spent the day with her half-sister and maybe even a last friend. She created the app after all. I promise you don't want to work for me, Dalma says, her arm interlocked with her half-sisters as they cross the street. I don't want to work for me. This job has become such a job. But this in internship is so stupid, Dahlia says. If I'm going to work this hard in tech, I might as well get paid triple what I'm receiving now. Dahlia is the most impatient 20-year-old in New York. She refuses to slow down and is always ready to move from one phase of her life to the next. When she started dating her last girlfriend, she brought up getting married within a week. And now she wants to turn her tech internship into a last friend job. Whatever. How did the meetings go? Did you get to meet Mark Zuckerberg? Meeting well went really well, Dharma says. Twitter may launch the feature as soon as next month. Facebook may need a little more time. Dharma is in town meeting with developers from both Twitter and Facebook this morning. She pitched a new last message feature that will allow respective users to prepare their final tweet statuses so their online legacy is more meaningful than, say, their thoughts on a popular movie or some viral video or someone else's dog. What do you think your last message would be, Dahlia asks. I'll probably go with the Moulin Rouge quote about how the greatest thing in the world is to love and be loved in return and yada blah whatever. Yeah, you seem truly passionate about that quote, sis, Dalma says. Dalma has given thought to this question, of course. Last friend has been 
an incredible resource over the past two years since its prototype stage, but she'll forever be horrified by the 11 last friends serial killings last summer. She was tempted to sell the app, wash the blood from her hands, but there have been so many instances where the app has done good, like this afternoon on the train when she overheard a conversation between two young women smiling at each other, when one said she was so grateful she reached out over last friend learning the other loves the moments movement so much she tags the city with graffiti to promote the app her app before dalma can answer two teen boys run past her one with a buzz cut brown complexion and shades lighter than her own and another with glasses full of brown hair and light tan skin like dahlia's the first teen trips the other helping him up and they take off again who knows where she wonders if they are half siblings with only a mother in common too Maybe they're lifelong friends, constantly up to no good and constantly lifting each other up. Maybe they've just met. Dama watches the teenage, teens run off. My last message would be to find your people and to treat each other each day like a lifetime. Mateo, 6.24pm. We're in the clear, sinking against a wall like earlier when I was breaking down after running away from Lydia's. I want to be somewhere safe, like a locked room, but... At, not out here where people can hunt down Rufus. Rufus holds my hand and wraps his arm around my shoulders, holding me close. Props on punching Peck, Rufus says. First time I've ever hit anyone, I say. I'm still in shock from all my firsts. Singing in a public, kissing Rufus, dancing, punching someone, hearing bullets that close. Though you really shouldn't punch people with guns, Rufus says. You could have got yourself killed. I stare out into the street, still trying to catch my breath. Are you criticising how I saved your life? I could have turned around and you would have been dead. I'm not having that. I have no regrets. I go back in time and imagine myself being a little slower, maybe tripping and losing valuable time and losing my valuable friend as bullets rip apart his beautiful heart. I almost lost Rufus. We have less than six hours left and if he goes first i'll be a zombie who's well aware his head is on the chopping block the connection i have with rufus isn't what i expected when i met him about three in the morning this day is unimaginably rewarding and still so so impossible i'm tearing up and there's no way no stopping there i finally cry because i want more mornings i miss everyone i say lydia the plutos me too rufus says but we can't risk their lives again. I nod. The suspense of everything is killing me. I can't take being out here. My chest is tight. There's a huge difference between living fearlessly, like I've finally been doing, and knowing you have something to fear while you're out living. Will you hate me if I want to go home? I want to rest in my bed where everything is safe, and I want you to come with me. But inside this time, I know I spent my life hiding there, but I did my best to live too, and I want to share this place with you. Rufus squeezes my hand. Take me home, Matteo. The Plutos, 6.33pm. Deathcast did not call these three Plutos because they aren't dying today, but their fourth did receive the alert and that's just as de devastating. The Plutos almost witnessed the death of their best friend Rufus as a gun was pulled on them. Rufus's last friend appeared out of nowhere like a superhero and punched Peck in the face, saving Rufus's life for a little while longer at least. The Plutos know Rufus won't survive the day, but they didn't lose him to a violent act from someone who had it out for him. The Plutos stand together on the curb outside Clint's graveyard as a cop car speeds off down the street, taking the gang with no name away. The two boys cheer and hope they spend more time behind bars than they did today. The girl regrets her role in all of this, but she relieved, she's relieved her insecure, jealous boyfriend didn't deliver the killing blow. Ex-boyfriend. While they're not facing death themselves tomorrow, everything changes for the Plutos. They will have to restart something they've grown used to doing. Their youth is packed with more history than most teens their age. The death of their friend, however it unfolds, will stay with them forever. Entire lives aren't lessons, but there are lessons in lives. You may be born into a family, but you walk into friendships. Some you'll discover you should put behind you. Others are worth every risk. The three friends hug a planet missing from their Pluto solar system, but never forgotten. Rufus, 7.17pm. We pass the plot where Matteo buried that bird this morning, back when I was still a stranger on a bike. We should be freaking out big time because we're going to be in our, on our way out soon too, like old meat. 
but I'm keeping it together by Mateo's side and he seems chill too. Mateo leads the way into his building. If there's nothing else you want to do, Roof, I thought we could visit my dad again. You just call me Roof. Mateo nods and his face scrunches up like he's told a bad joke. Thought I would try it out. That okay? Definitely okay, I say. That's a good plan too. I'm cool with resting for a bit before making that run. Part of me can't help but wonder if Mateo is bringing me home so he can have sex, but it's probably safe to assume sex isn't on the brain for him. Mateo is about to press the elevator button until he remembers we're not about that, especially not this late in the game. He opens the stairwell door and cautiously goes up. The silence is mad heavy between us. Step by step, I wish I could challenge him to a race to his apartment, like he imagined for us at Jones's Beach, but it's a surefire way to never actually reach the apartment. I miss. Mateo, Mateo stops on the third floor. I think he's about to bring up his dad, maybe Lydia. I miss when I was so young I didn't know to be afraid of death. I miss yesterday when I was paranoid and not actually dying. I hug him because that says everything when I actually don't have anything to say. He squeezes me back before we go up the last flight of steps. Mateo unlocks his front door. I can't believe I'm bringing a boy home for the first time and there's no one here for you to meet. How wild would it be if we go in and dad, his dad is on the couch waiting for him? We go inside and no one is here except us. Hope not. I tour the living room. Not gonna front, I got myself a little nervous like some old family friend turned enemy is about to pop out because they figured the place was vulnerable with Mateo's dad in a coma. Everything seems good. I look at Mateo's class photos. There's a bunch of photos of him without glasses. When did you have to get glasses? I ask. Fourth grade. I was only teased for about a week so I was lucky. Mateo stares at his senior photo, cap and gown, and it's like he's looking at a mirror and finding some sci-fi alternative universe version of himself. I should capture it on camera because it's dope, but the look on his face only makes me want to hug him again. I bet I disappointed my dad by signing up for online classes. He was so proud of me when I graduated, and I'm sure he was hoping I would change my mind and get off the internet and have a typical college experience. You'll get to tell him everything you've done, I say. We won't hang around here long. It'll mean a lot if, to Mateo if we see his dad again. Mateo nods, follow me. We go down a short hall and into his room. So this is where you've been hiding from me, I say. There are books all over the floor, like someone tried robbing the place. Mateo doesn't seem freaked out by it. I wasn't hiding from you. Mateo crouches and puts the books into piles. I had a panic attack earlier. I don't want my dad knowing I was scared when he comes home. I want him to believe I was brave all the way through. I get down on my knees and pick up a book. Is there a system here? Not anymore, Mateo says. We put the books back on the shelves and pick up some little trinkets off the floor. I don't like the idea of you being scared either. It wasn't that bad. Don't worry about old me. I look around his room. There's an Xbox Infinity, a piano, some speakers, a map I pick up off the floor for him. I'm flattening it out with my fist thinking about all the dope places Matai and I have been together when I spot a Luigi hat on the floor between his dresser and bed. I grab the hat and grin and he grins as I put it on his head. There's the guy who hooped me up this morning, I say. Luigi, Matteo asks. I laugh and pull out my phone. He doesn't smile for the camera. He's legit just smiling at me. I haven't felt this good about myself since Amy. Photo shoot time. Go jump on your bed or something. Matteo rushes to the bed and leaps, falling face first. He gets up and jumps and jumps, turning to the window quickly as if some freak bounce accident will launch him out there like a catapult. I don't stop taking photos of this awesome, unrecognisable Mateo. Mateo, 7.43pm. I'm out of character and Rufus is loving it. I'm loving it too. I stop bouncing and stay seated at the edge of the bed, trying to catch my breath. Rufus sits beside me and grabs my hand. I'm going to sing something for you, I say. I don't want you to let go of his hand, but I promise myself I'll put both of mine to good use. I sit in front of the keyboard. Get ready, this is a once in a lifetime performance. I look over my shoulder, feeling special yet? Rufus fakes being unimpressed. I'm feeling okay, a little tired actually. Well, wake up and feel special. My dad used to sing this for my mother, though his voice is, though his voice is much better than mine. I play the keys for Elton John's Your Song with a pounding heart. Through my, 
Though my face isn't as hot as it was back at Clint's graveyard. I'm not kidding when I tell Rufus to feel special. I'm off key and I don't care because of him. I sing about a man making potions in a travelling show. How my gift is my song, sitting on the roof, keeping the sun turned on. The sweetest eyes I've ever seen and so much more. I turn during a quick break and catch Rufus filming me on his phone. I smile his way. He comes over and kisses me on my forehead while I sing with him by my side. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is now you're in the world. I finish and Rufus smile is a victory. He's tearing up. You were hiding from me, Mateo. I always wanted to stumble into someone like you and it sucks that I had to find you through a stupid app. I like the last friend app, I say. I get this his sentiment, but I wouldn't change how I met Rufus. There I was, looking for some company, and I found you, and you found me, and we chose to meet up because of gut instinct. What would have been the alternative? I can't guarantee I would have ever left here, or that our paths would have crossed. Not with the one day left. It would make for a great story, yeah, but I think the app puts you out there more than anything else. For me, it meant admitting I was lonely and wanting to connect with someone. I just wasn't counting on what I have with you. You're right, Mateo Torres. It happens every now and again, Rufus Emeterio. It's the first time I've said his last name out loud, and I hope I've pronounced it right. I go to the kitchen and return with some snacks. It's childish, but we play house. I smear peanut butter on crackers for him after confirming he's not allergic and serve them with a glass of iced tea. How was your day, Rufus? The best, he says. Me too, I say. Rufus pats the edge of the bed. bed. Get over here. I sit down beside him and we get comfortable, linking our arms and legs together. We talk more about our histories, like how whenever he was acting out, his parents would force him to sit in the middle of the room with them, kind of like how my dad would tell me to go take a shower and calm down. He tells me about Olivia and I tell him about Lydia until it stops being about the past. This is our safe space, our little island. Rufus traces an invisible circle around us. We aren't moving from here. We can't die if we don't move. You got me? Maybe we'll smother each other to death, I say. Better than whatever the hell is off our island. I take a deep breath. But if for some reason this plan doesn't work, we need to promise to find each other in the afterlife. There has to be an afterlife, Roof, because it's the only thing that makes dying this young fair. Rufus nods. I will make it so easy for you to find me. Neon signs and marching bands. Good, because I might not have my glasses, I say. Not sure if they'll ascend with me. You're positive about a movie theatre in the afterlife, but not if you'll have your glasses. Seems like an oversight in your heavenly blueprint. Rufus removes my glasses and puts them on. Wow, you're right, suck. You taking my glasses isn't helping my case here. My vision is hazy and I can only make out his skin tone but none of his features. I bet you look stupid. Let me take a photo. Actually, lean in with me. I can't see anything but I look straight, squinting and smile. He puts the glasses back on my face and I check out the photo. I look like I've just woken up. Rufus wearing my glasses is a welcome intimacy. Like we've known each other for so long that this kind of silliness comes easily to us. I wasn't ever counting on this. I would have loved you if we had more time. I spit it out because it's what I'm feeling in this moment and was feeling the many moments and minutes and hours before. Maybe I already do. I hope you don't hate me for saying that, but I know I'm happy. People have their time stamps on how long you should know someone for before earning the right to say it. But I wouldn't lie to you no matter how little time we have. People waste time and wait for the right moment and we don't have that luxury. If we had our entire lives ahead of us, I bet you'd get tired of me telling you how much I love you because I'm positive that's the path we're heading on. But because we're about to die, I want to say it as many times as I want. And I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Aww. Rufus, 7.54pm. Yo, you know damn well I love you too, man. It actually hurts how much I mean this. I don't talk about took out of my dick you know that's not me i want to kiss him again because he's resurrected me but i'm tight if i didn't have common sense if i didn't hadn't fought so hard to be who i am i would do some dumb shit again and punch something because i'm so pissed 
The world is mad cruel. I started my end day beating up someone because he's dating my ex-girlfriend and now I'm in bed with an awesome dude I haven't known for 24 hours. This sucks, do you think? Do I think what? 12 hours ago, Mateo would have been nervous asking me a question. He would have done it, but he would have looked away. Now he doesn't break eye contact. I hate to ask it, but it might be on his mind too. Did you find... Did finding each other kill us? We were going to die before we knew each other, Mateo says. I know, but maybe this is how it, it was always written in stone, or the stars or whatever. Two dudes meet, they fall for each other, they die. If this is really our truth, I get to punch whatever I want. Don't try to stop me. That's not our story, Mateo squeezed my hands. We're not dying because of love. We were going to die today, no matter what. You didn't just keep me alive, you made me live. He climbs into my lap and bringing us closer. He hugs me so hard, his heart is beating against my chest. I bet he feels mine. Two dudes met, they fell in love. They live, that's our story. That's a better story. Ending still needs some work. Forget about the ending, Mateo says in my ear. He pushes his chest away from mine so he can look at me in the eye. I doubt the world is in the mood for a miracle, so we know not to expect a happily ever after. I only care about the endings we live through today, like how I stop being somewhat afraid of the world and the people in it, and I stop being someone I don't like, I say. You wouldn't have liked me. He's tearing up and smiling, and you wouldn't have waited for me to be brave. Maybe it's better to have gotten it right at and been happy for one day instead of living a lifetime of wrongs. He's right about everything. We rest our heads on his pillow. I'm hoping we die in our sleep and we it, that seems like the best way to go. I kiss my last friend because the world can't be against us if it brought us together. Mateo 841. I wake up feeling invincible. I don't check the time because I don't want anything to shatter my survivor spirit in my head. I'm already in another day. I have beat death cast prediction. The first person in history to do so. I put my glasses back on, kiss Rufus's forehead and watch him resting. Nervous, I reach for his heart and I'm relieved to see it still beating. He's invincible too. I climb over Rufus and I bet he would kill him, me himself if he caught me leaving our safe island. But I want to introduce him to Dad. I leave the room and go to the kitchen to prepare tea for us. I set a pot over the stove's burner and check the cabinets for tea selections and decide on peppermint. When I switch on the burner, my chest sinks with regret. Even when you know death is coming, the blaze of it all is still sudden. Okay, and that's, that's where we'll stop. Oh, we're getting to the end and it is very sad. Um good book but really makes you think anyway hope you're having a great day hit like and subscribe um and i will see you tomorrow for the last chapter bring your tissues bye